With massive changes to leak in our new preseason, in the middle of the year we are going to see some hefty changes for the high yield healer's power ranking. For this one, we still focus on simplicity and try to suggest easy to play champions to you that have high impact. It's not a list for high elo, but a damn good one regardless if you want some LP. For those of you who want RP instead, check out the link in the description below. We are giving away 11,525 RP every single patch and you got a chance to win it all. How do you do that? Check out the link in the description below, join Pro Guides for just $7.99 a month and leave your Pro Guides username in the comment section below. And that's just the extra to give back to you guys. If you want to know more about the masterclasses and learning from your favorite pro players, you gotta stick around until the end of the video where we will talk about this. And obviously you can cancel the membership at any point in time. Sounds good? Then let's move over to our top lane tier list and let's take a look. We don't have as many crazy changes for this one and just minor adjustments and artifacts to direct buffs to items. However, there's one new champion we really need to talk about in the top lane, even if you're not talking about high elo. Vayne has received a bunch of new item choices that feed right into her on-hit nature while attacking lightning fast. With top laners dreading this champion, it comes to no surprise that some of them might even straight up ban this infamous pick. Everything is better than facing it. With the updated mythics, we also have to mention our next pick. Orn's smile is nuclear and everyone on Orn's team shares the same sentiment. Orn is busted. Did you take a look at what those Orn crafted items do and what stats they provide for their allies. Orn is probably going to be one of the most contested picks for the Baron lane, but luckily both Vayne and Kale have a good matchup into the Forge God. In addition to this, they can abuse items such as Cal for an improved economy in the laning phase. You might also encounter other ranged top laners, especially in higher elos. Next up is our jungle tier list, and here we have some adjustments. Take a look first and make yourself familiar with the rankings. A clear winner of the more recent changes is Nocturne in the jungle role. The lethality item changes and buffs to Stridebreaker open up interesting item choices for this pick. Do you want to be the one-hit wonder that turns untargetable after killing someone? Or do you like slowing them down and blocking them down? Into hyper squishy but bursty champions or tanky champions, you'll now have interesting item choices that you can look into and make use of, which increases the overall viability of this pick. Another interesting candidate for this patch is Vi. Many one tricks have played her with a wide selection of builds and even took her into the mid lane a few times here and there, adjusting the vines under a spellbite passive to deal more damage based on your own base damage rather than the enemy's HP bar will make it even stronger into less tanky targets. On top of that, you can also expect some interesting on-hit builds to emerge as Vi players are always known for this. You have a favorite Vi player on your list? Make sure to keep your eyes peeled and observe what they're cooking. Moving up in the rankings, even in the lower elo tier list is Belveth. Some might say this champion is too hard to pilot, but if we ignored all those changes to items, we'd be absolutely disingenuous to say this champion isn't busted. As it is, she's going to be in the OP tier for the high elo and you can expect a lot more on his shenanigans. The next OP thing is the change to Lost Chapter for the mid lane among other assassin item changes. Let's take a look at the changes in ranking first. Lost Chapter being cheaper and all champions that have access to Futures Market can massively impact their own laning phases now with slight adjustments to their recall timers. For example, Mazar's most annoying problem during the early stages of the game is his mana pool and the same applies to a lot of other mages. Contrary to the typical Dorans or Tia start, you can also purchase a Sapphire Crystal first. This will accelerate your first reset massively and allows you to play matchups in different ways. For many mages, Lost Chapter is the milestone item that defines success or failure in the early game and getting it earlier will lead to higher impact. Turns out having mana as a mage is quite cool. Swain is also benefiting heavily from this change as he has two major build options on top of being buffed prior to this. Go with the traditional run of ages for tankiness and even Karthus has an angle for this item sometimes if he's played on mid lane or go for the lost chapter item. With the early lost chapter you can really start spamming your spells without worrying too much and lose out during the laning phase. In pro play mages are the pinnacle of strength but in solo queue, they often tend to suffer due to the chaotic nature of that queue. Especially with the assassin item changes, that can make things a little bit scary for mages, but you can count yourself lucky that you probably won't see any amazingly played Akshans or Zeds or other assassins in this elo bracket. For high elo however, you are in for absolutely negative surprises in a sense of not having fun against any assassin type champion. Mid lane is wrapped up and now it's the AD carry roll on the horizon and here we have absurd buffs to a few champions 
core items. Take a good look at the list first and then let's jump right into our first champion highlight. Tristana has been one of the notorious bullies of the AD carry position that have decent scaling, similar to Jinx who just takes over the later stages of the game. The new item changes and the emphasis on making sure that your energized items hit hard as you use them can turn Tristana into a one-hit wonder. Thinking of items such as Rapid Fire Cannon and Static Shift to put more power into Tristana's already high range while empowering her wave clear without too many drawbacks turn her into an issue. Similar things apply to other champions that may have been gatecapped due to their low wave clear capabilities or just their inability to keep up the pace in a fast paced environment. The new goal of this archetype of a build would be to decide a fight before it starts. Hit once, but you hit hard, which puts perfect emphasis on the nature of energized items. Next to this, we also have an on hit variant for AD carries. Ginsu's now having hybrid pen and being a mythic item opens up new levels of brokenness on other champions. One champion that will go crazier in higher elos is going to be Varus, but here, Vayne will be a solid pickup in that regard. The effect of the buffs to the lost chapter also ripples towards the bot lane. Known criminals such as Vyga, Seraphine, and Karthus are welcoming this change with a wide grin on their faces. This change will allow them to not lose out on too many waves and give up playthings. The scary part though comes with the minion change though, and the fact that they won't attack you anymore if they're already locked on that tower. Depending on your matchup and the push power, this can be used to viciously torment people under the turrets without having too much counterplay available. Many people have already talked about this and it's a major change to the existing game systems and it will take a lot of time to mentally process this and translate this into your typical gameplay. Not to mention, it's a massive change in a lot of matchups. So what class is going to be the best class now after all those changes? Assassins, AD carries or maybe even supports? Curious about what the support role has in store for you this patch? Then take a look at our list first. For our tanks, we have Tarek for our champion spotlight. He might even have an interesting build path with Echoes of Helia against melee heavy team comps. The nearly non-existent cooldown on his Q, featuring the attack speed steroid of his, can turn him into a DPS monster. With the item being as cheap as it is, you'll have high value super early on, and you'll be able to play alongside Tarek's desired trading patterns of two auto attacks for every spell he casts. For reference, it's all about Echoes of Helia. Two empowered auto attacks to harvest two soul shards, consume two of those with your Q, heal and deal extra damage, rinse and repeat. Sounds absolutely busted in my opinion. For enchanters, we have Sona and Milio, who also have access to this item, but can also opt into the new Moonstone Renewer. Especially with Sona, we have an interesting contestant when it comes to brokenness. In the past, Moonstone promoted hyper-passive gameplay to heal up the lowest target. This Moonstone, however, takes advantage of the fact that you're healing and shielding multiple people and your effects are chaining. It's now substantially worse than the old Moonstone on a few champions, but if you have AoE healing, this could come in clutch. Let's imagine Soraka and her single target healing. Unless you have a big amount of AP, you're not going to do too much with this item. However, if you get to cast your ultimate in a teamfight scenario and your teammates are close to each other, and ideally at the bonus threshold of the item, the healing could explode into burst healing. Nonetheless, it's important to mention that Echoes of Helia seems like the better item if you can consistently deal damage and heal or shield. Those of you who want to dominate lane can now access Imperial Mandate without giving up your mythic slot for it. As an Annie, that opens up options that might be interesting to listen to. You no longer have to choose between Shoralias and Mandate and are able to buy both. With this, you have the tools to provide movement speed in times of need and burst damage on your combo. The biggest benefit to you here is the fact that the item is super cheap which will help you out massively. You have to think about one thing though. You have to choose wisely when it comes to your second items as the updated items directly compete with Raleigh's utility on that slot. Does that feel like way too much to process and you're kind of lost and don't know what to buy and play? Don't worry because we have everything you need. Check out the link in the description below and GoPro. Masterclasses from which you can learn from your favorite pro player and individual sessions are waiting just for you. The way to your dream elo is only $7.99 a month away and you shouldn't forget about our giveaway. Become a top lane pro with general sniper or master bot lane techniques with sneaky. The rift is yours and that wraps up today's video. Thank you all for watching and don't forget to leave a like subscribe to the channel for everything pro guides League of Legends.